and there's a shaking in the land and you have to allow that shaking to take place on the inside of you. I don't care whatever it takes. I want to see a change in me because I want to see a change in my nature. I want to be shaken by the hand of God. God is not a respecter of persons. Jesus is the same in Finland today that he's always been. It's got to do with the mindset. It's got to do with the heart. And when the heart is hungry, when your thinking is straightened out by the word of God, there's a river that begins to flow in your life. Good morning, church. Who's excited for this week? Yay! Well, welcome to our morning service and the first day of summer camp meeting. Let's be excited about what he's going to do this week. Well, let's stand up and let's praise him because this is the day that he has made. Amen.
Aleluya. Aleluya. Welcome, welcome, welcome to our Sunday morning service and the first service of our summer camp meeting. You might be... Hallelujah! You might be seated. Hallelujah! Tervetuloa meidän sunnuntai aamun kokoukseen ja kesäkonfan ensimmäiseen kokoukseen. Ja meillä tulee olemaan pääkielenä tässä kokouksessa englannin kieli. Eli jos tarvitset ä, suomenkielistä tulkkausta, niin meillä on simultaani tulkkaus saatavilla Live Voice appin kautta. Ja meidän kokousavustajat antaa lisää ohjeita siihen liittyen. Ja meillä on myöskin venäjän kielinen tulkkaus saatavilla. So finally our summer camp meeting week is here. Who's excited? Yes. So there's going to be a 16 services all together. So this week all the regular programs are not going to be there. So no prayer meeting, no no home groups, but being here in the presence of the Lord. Today we have the evening service at 4 p.m. So Sundays we have 10 a.m. and 4 p.m. service. But all the rest of the days there's going to be 10 a.m. service and 7 p.m. service. So put those in calendar and make sure you are here in every meeting and receive what the Lord has for you. Also next Sunday, all the cities we are gathered here on the Sunday services. So no No Sunday services at the cities, but being here in the one place in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Ja kun tulitte sisään, niin näette varmasti noin mahtavat rekvisiitat tuolla aulassa. Eli meillä on lasten kesäleiri alkamassa huomenna. Halleluja. Skuba ja ihmeet ja merkit. Ja tähän lasten leiriin niin on vielä muutama paikka jäljellä. Eli voit rekisteröityä netissä, mutta rekisteröi lapsesi tänään. Eli tänään on vielä mahdollisuus rekisteröityä. Ja sitten ennen kuin tuot heidät huomenna leirille. Ja tämä osoite rekisteröintiin on riverchurch.fi kautta kesäleiri. Ja tämä leiri on tosiaan neljä aamua, eli maanantaista torstaihin. And when you are full of fire, when you have been receiving here in the presence of the Lord, there's also going to be soul winning between the services. So if you feel like, now I need to go and share the gospel to somebody, you can do that in between of the services. Hallelujah. But let's go back to the worship. Hallelujah. Let's stand up and go back to the worship.
Father, we come with praise in our hearts. We lift up a song and a sound this morning. For you are a mighty God, a good God, creator of heaven and earth. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we've come to worship. We've come to say that we love you, Lord. Lord, we've come together to say together that, Lord, you are our everything. Nothing and no one else compares to you. Oh, we worship you. Come on, just from your heart, just begin to just love on him. Just worship him. Lord, I love you. Oh, I worship you, Lord. hungry and thirsty this week for everything you have for us let everyone be shaken in this place let every individual be shaken let every married couple be shaken let every family be shaken that even as we've come together in your name this week that there'll be a trembling and shaking that would take place even during this week in our land Lord we honor you we worship you we thank you you are number one in our life you are the first in our life you are our all in all you are our everything oh we worship you we love you oh you're good and your mercy endures forever oh hallelujah you're good thank you Lord precious Holy Spirit do whatever you want to do even now and throughout this whole week from this Sunday morning to the next Sunday night do whatever you want to do Lord we are hungry and we are thirsty we've come with open hearts ready to receive what you have for us oh hallelujah Let's take just a moment to pray for our nation. Even if you're from another nation, if Finland is now your home, lift up your voice just to pray for this land. Father, this morning we pray in the name that is above every name, in the name of Jesus as your ambassadors as your messengers as your body on this and in this beautiful land we pray for Finland right now Lord shake everything that can be shaken let every hidden thing be exposed let every lie be exposed let every plan of hell be exposed. That in these final days we would see your hand. That the hearts would cry out to you. That people's trust would turn from
structures and handmade systems to the living God. That young men will cry out to you. That young ladies will cry out to you. That men and women will cry out to you, Lord. That the spirit of the fear of the Lord would sweep through this land. That hearts would turn to you, Father. Let there be shaking in the financial. Let there be shaking in the political. Let there be shaking in the religious world. Let there be shaking. Let everything that can be shaken, let it be shaken. It has to start with you. It has to start with me. It has to start with us. You have to first cry out that, Lord, let those things that can be shaken in my life, let them be shaken. For as the Lord downloaded to me the theme for this week, which is shaking in the land, it's something that's already happening. All the man-made systems, religious structures that people have established are being shaken. And do you know what, it, what is going to happen after that? Even as financial structures, social structures, where people have placed their trust and confidence and are going to be shaken, people will find themselves in a place where that which they thought was the firm foundation is being shaken. Everything is being shaken. Oh, I thought I could trust my reason. I thought I could trust my logical reasoning. I thought I could trust the government. I thought I could trust my finances. I thought I could trust my family upbringing for I'm from a good home. I'm from a stable home. Everything that can be shaken is being shaken. I can feel, there's a trembling and shaking taking place in the land. You have to decide, Lord, let that shaking begin with me. <laughs> Lord, if there's things in my life that can't be shaken, let them be shaken. See, you can come into a service like this just as, a, okay, I'm just going to come in there, visit that place. I'm going to come sing a few songs. I'm going to attend. Or that you can come with an expectant and a hungry heart waiting to receive and expecting to receive with the humble attitude. Jesus said these words, sick, the, 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 well, the healthy do not need a healer, but sick need a healer. Healthy is already fine. And he wasn't really even talking about physically sick or healthy. If you think you're fine, but there's no fruit in your life. If you think you're fine, but your life is not lined up with the eternal plan of God. If you think you're fine, but you're no way connected to God's eternal plan. You need help, but if you think you're fine, you'll never look for it. That's why the hardest people to help are those who think they're fine, but everybody can see they're not fine. <laughs> Hey, everybody say, you're not fine. But they think, oh, I'm good, I'm fine. But they can't receive help because they don't even think that they need help. But those that are hungry, those that are desperate, those that are thirsty, those that are, that are, that are humble, humble, those that come with a yielded and a humble and submissive heart and say, Lord, I'm humbling myself under your mighty hand. He will raise you up. He will lift you up. Let this be a week where maybe for the first time from your heart you're crying out, Lord, let it be done in me. Do what you need to do in me. How many of you believe that there's still a few things Lord can do in your life? <laughs> or have you fully arrived already? Could there be just one thing? This morning you say, yes, Lord, I need more. There's more that Lord has for me. That's why pride is such a wicked thing. Because it keeps you where you're at. The way up is the way down. 
Say with me, the way up is the way down. In other words, when you humble yourself, God can lift you up. See, we're so educated here. We're so smart. We're Finns. And all of you internationals as well, you, you've come to this educated. I saw one stat that uh, Finland has the highest average IQ in Europe. We're so smart. You're, we're so smart. So intellectual, so educated. We're so proud of our education. We think we know everything. I mean, we have Ule. We... I just, my only prayer is that Ule would be seen around the world so everybody would, be know, would know and come to experience the great truth. Those of you who didn't understand, that was a joke. It was humor, okay? <laughs> but when you come with a humble heart, with an open heart to say, Lord, Sometimes men can be hard-headed. Come with a humble heart. Sometimes ladies can be, you know, you, you may be quiet, but there's things in your heart that are not lined up with the will of God. Come this week with a humble heart. Can you say amen? There's great things that the Lord has for you. The Bible actually says in James 1 that he is a rich giver who does not withhold. Amen. Only thing he requires us that we come with a humble heart. We come with faith. Hallelujah. And this morning as we've come to worship him, we lay everything else at the altar. You may have come here, you're very smart. I know there's many smart people here. You may be highly educated, working in the field of science and research. Do you know what you do when we worship? You lay down your accomplishments. You lay down all those things and all your reasonings and you just worship the King. Those of you who are wealthy, you have money. What do you do? You just put everything else aside. You bow down. For it's Him who's given you the power to get wealth. So you bow down and you worship Him. Those of you who are good looking, which I think everybody here. <laughs> with your good looks, you bow down. You get on your face and you worship Him. Those of you who have a position... Those of you who are respected and honored and people look up to you, they ask you for advice in your field because you are a professional. What do you do? You lay it all down and you worship Him. So we lay everything down. We worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. One more time, just lift your hands. Oh, we worship you. You are great, Lord. Wonderful, Lord. We worship you. Laying everything else aside and down before you. We worship you. For you are the one who's given us the ability to do everything that we are doing. You are the one who's blessed us. Who's given us what we have. You're the one who's equipped us. You're the one who's lifted us. You're the one who's gifted us. You're the one who's graced us. The creator of heaven and earth. Yes, Just lift up your voice in your heavenly language. Yes, Say this with me. Say this week. I'm hungry and I'm thirsty. 
for what you have for me, Lord. And by the end of this week, I will have seen everything you have for me. For I come with faith and a humble heart. In Jesus' name. Say hallelujah. Come on, say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, say hallelujah. It's time to rejoice. Hallelujah. Summer camp meeting. It's summer camp meeting of 2024. Where saints have come together to praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Come on, greet someone, welcome someone, give somebody a hug. Tell someone it's good to see you. Go out of your way a little bit. You don't have to sit down so quickly. If you want to take a moment, if you see a friend you haven't seen in a few months, just take a moment to do a little bit of a pilgrimage and a journey. We welcome you as well. Come on, guys. You sit, so qu- uh, sit down so quickly. You can go say hello to somebody. I know there's some friends and, and family. You can see, just go ahead and just say hello. But we welcome you wherever you're watching from as well. You can still make it here. We're going to continue tonight, this afternoon, 4 p.m. And then we're going to go all the way to a Sunday night at 4 p.m. So you have time to get here. Uh, It is an amazing time to be alive in 2024. You can travel from another side of the world and still make it here. Uh, for tomorrow night now if you're at the Antarctica I'm not sure how the travel plans go so if you're watching from the south then just make the arrangements I'm pretty sure you can get here at least by Tuesday night but the Lord is good amen hallelujah Hallelujah. it's good to see everybody I'm telling you if if this is the first time you're hearing about the summer camp meeting that we're gonna continue this, mo- uh, this morning, of course. Who's here this morning? About a half of you. Okay, the rest of you can join us a little later. And then we're going to go- continue tonight. Uh, this afternoon is going to be the regular Sunday afternoon time. But it's going to be part of the summer camp meeting. So it's uh, at 4 p.m. And then the rest of the week we're going to go from 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. So I want you to join us in all the services and you can say well that's a lot Uh, it actually isn't that much something happens when we really press in and I want to encourage you to do that this week I wanted to just read to you a few verses Uh, if I can uh, the worship team can stay with me for just a little bit but I want to read to you just a few verses from Luke chapter 10 because this is Sunday morning this is when we come to worship together in other words like I mentioned there earlier we put everything else aside your accomplishments everything you are everything the Lord has blessed you with and with your brothers brothers and sisters you come and and you worship him there's other agendas that you may have other days of the week but you lay everything else aside and you take this time especially for us on a Sunday morning Sunday is really the first day of the week. So you take the first moments of the first day of the week and just worship Him. You're not busy with something else. You don't have to raise your hand for this one. I don't want to embarrass anybody this early in the morning. But how many of you can get busy sometimes? Don't raise your hand. Some of you felt so much about it that I know you told me not to raise my hand, but I'm still raising my hand. How many of you can get busy sometimes? How many of you can, can, can just get so wound up and you're just so attentive about something that you there's there's, nobody can even get through to you you're just like but in Luke chapter 10 let me read from verse 38 Luke 10 and 38 now while they were on their way it occurred that Jesus entered a certain village and a woman named Martha received and welcomed him into her house so she was a very hospitable person I believe we need more hospitality. (laughs) It's 
it's okay to respond. Say amen. amen. So there's certain things you don't want to pick up from the Finnish culture. There's other things that are great. There's other hard qualities. I believe the Lord will use Finns in these final days. But the lack of hospitality is not something you want to adopt. You can see people like Abraham in the Old Covenant, who's the father of our faith, even in the New. He was a very hospitable man of God. I believe we can learn hospitality, even if we are not good cooks. You can do, use vault. Just set the plates. Why ever be looking at me so seriously? This is serious business. But Martha received and welcomed him into her house. And she had a sister named Mary who seated herself at the Lord's feet and was listening to his teaching. What did Mary do? Mary seated herself at the Lord's feet. Whenever there's, a poss- uh, uh, whenever there's an opportunity, I always like to sit in the front. Now, I'm not saying you push yourself up to the front. And the ushers tell you, no, you can't come. And you keep pushing. No. That's when you get sent in the back in shame. But when, there's a po- when, there, is a, when there is a possibility to, to be seated up to the front, it's always better. Amen. Okay, I'll I'll come back to that a little later. (laughs) So Mary sat right at Jesus' feet. Now this is the master. He was in the ministry only for about three and a half years. If you wanted to do that when he was on the earth, physically, during his ministry, you had to do it in those three and a half years. And Mary recognized, I'm not missing this opportunity. I'm pushing, I'm going to get right there at Jesus' feet. I'm going to open up my ears. You know, you can listen, but not listen. How many of you have kids? Has there been a time when your kids, kid was listening, but not listening? How many of you have been a child? You have been a child. At one time in your life, you were a child. I got about a third of the group. This is tough, but I'm plowing through. Praise the Lord. By next Sunday, it'll be better. Thank you, Lord. You're good and your mercy endures forever. <laughs> so if you have children or if you've been a child, you, you know sometimes when you were a child, you were listening, but you weren't listening. There's a saying that comes in one ear, gets out the other ear. There's many expressions in many languages for that when you're trying to tell your child something, but they're not listening. Or they're listening, but they're not listening. So Mary sat at Jesus' feet and she was listening really listening to Jesus' teaching. But Martha, overly occupied and too busy. <laughs> Come on, you can... the, the, the first key to breakthrough could be that you laugh at yourself. <laughs> I'm just trying to help somebody. You know, some of you are so serious. We've come together this summer camp meeting. Huh? I'm going to get everything out. <laughs> But Martha, overly occupied and too busy, was distracted with much serving. (laughs) In this church, we believe in serving. That's the heart that Jesus Christ himself came to serve, not to be served. We are here to serve. We are here to serve. We're here to see the kingdom come as his servants. But clearly the Holy Spirit wanted us to know something because he wanted these things to be in the scripture. But Martha occupied and too busy, was distracted with much serving, and she came up to him and said, Lord, is it nothing to you that my sister has left me to serve alone? (laughs) I'm alone. And Jesus responded, you're right. I'm gonna command Mary to help you in the kitchen. You know, we had, uh, we had certain people join the church at one time. And uh, they had been part of another church. And, uh, you know, the Lord was leading them to, to, to keep, you know, to, to move on from the previous place. And, and then they told, told us this, that 
final straw for them was when that other church had a prayer meeting and during the prayer meeting there were 20 ladies in the kitchen cooking and nobody was praying and that was like okay that's it if there's a prayer meeting and everybody's too busy cooking the food that you're gonna eat after the prayer meeting instead of praying something is wrong we can get so busy with all kinds of things see we are different our personalities are different so it can show up a different way it can be demonstrated different way but the key is that a heart our focus is in the right place tell her to help me to lend a hand and do her part along with me now Lord didn't say to Martha to, or to Mary to join her sister in the kitchen but the Lord replied in verse 41 to her saying Martha Martha you are anxious and troubled about many things now this is summer camp meeting so there's certain things we just got to say but this is a definition of many Finnish ladies <laughs> you are anxious and troubled about many things There is need of one or but a few things. Mary has chosen a good portion. That which is to her advantage, which shall not be taken away from her. Hallelujah. Just put your uh, uh, Bible uh, uh, next to you or away for just a moment. Just lift your holy hands to heaven and just say, Lord, I love you. Oh, Lord, I love you. I worship you. I worship you. I worship you. I love you, Lord. Oh, you're good. You're wonderful. You're wonderful, Lord. We worship you this morning. You're good. Oh, hallelujah. Every Sunday, you can just keep worshiping. I'll just mention a few things. Every Sunday, this is what we do. You may have some other things you're doing and so forth, but just... Make sure you're prepared with everything beforehand. So you don't have other things that will distract you. So that you can be focused. And your hearts and minds can be set on the Lord as we come. Because all those who've even come from other cities. What you're doing is you're setting an example for others. There's many people like Martha in Finland. Not just ladies, some men as well. And your example of worship to your Savior is going to set up a new standard that He is your all in all. This is not a religious organization. We are the living body of the living God. We are the body of Christ. And what do we have if we don't have our first love to Him. What do we really have if we do not have our first love? That is to Him. Oh, hallelujah. And you don't need to be in church to worship. You can worship anytime, in any place. But as part of this local church, we come together once a week and we worship together see you can't worship together in any time in any place because not everybody is together we are here together to worship him that there's a beautiful sound a beautiful fragrance worship sacrifice of praise adoration gratitude Thanksgiving, a song, worship, a sound of instrument that is rising to God. Yes, that from your temple, your temple, there's a sound. Let it be a color, Lord, 
we just thank you this morning that all worry, all anxiety, all trouble is being broken off of every child of God in this place. That this rest of the year will be worry-free. This rest of the year will be anxiety-free. The rest of the year will be a rest of the year with the flow of heaven. No trouble, no worry, no unnecessary burden, but a flow of heaven. No care, no worry. Hallelujah. When you're under His hand, you're submitted to Him, you're in obedience, and you refuse to hold on to those worries, cares. Bible says, cast all of your care upon Him. Amen. Worry-free. Hey, anxiety is a freaky thing. It tries to come in. Attach itself on you. Just refuse all opportunities to get anxious. Excuse me, but you're, you're at the wrong house. This is an anxiety-free zone. In His will, my Master and Lord and Savior left me His peace. And there's no room for any worry, care, or anxiety. <laughs> Come on. Put a smile of faith on your face. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Come on, turn to somebody, tell them they're looking great this morning. <laughs> Encourage somebody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Some of you didn't do it. Well, you can just say good morning if that was true. <laughs> Pastor Santa, come on. We got some testimony. Thank you, worship team. How many of you can realize we, we're going to have awesome time in worship this week? Hallelujah. The sound is changing in your heart and life. Amen. And wherever you're from, even in other nations, you're going to take that sound back home with you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, River Church. As the people are coming here who are testifying, testifying very quickly i'm just gonna tell you the go souls from this week we we've been having 11 cities winning souls and um, 225 people have prayed with us on the street so even in this summer week you know we are uh, winning souls Everywhere we go, I mean, um, we were in our different places. Where were we today, uh, this week, Pastor Tommy? Where was I? I was, was I in Kuopio this week? Was it this week I was in Kuopio? I was in Kuopio this week. So, and there was people winning souls in Kuopio. Christina was one of them, actually. Yes, come up from Christina is one of the people who has been going out winning souls for um, many years. How long have you been with the church? I've been here for six years. Tässä seurakunnassa ja mä oon oppinut kaiken täällä evankelioinnista ja tiedätkö, nyt on aika mennä. So I've been in our church for six years and uh, I've learned everything about solving or, or evangelizing in this place. Ja ihmisten sydämet on valmiita. Heidän sydämensä on valmiita ottaa vastaan Jeesuksen. Now is the time to go. People's hearts are ready and they're ready to receive Jesus. Joo, ja meillä oli ma mahtavaa aikaa Kuopiossa. We had an awesome time in Kuopio. Me oltiin siellä torilla muailman navassa. We were in the market square. It's called, called the belly button of the world. In direct translation. Muailman napa, Kuopion tori. Ja siellä oli tosiaan, tota, me oltiin vajaa tunti, niin siellä tuli tosi paljon ihmisiä halusi ottaa Jeesuksen vastaan herrana ja pelastajana. And we were just, just short of an hour before the home group, and so many people wanted to receive Jesus on the market square. Joo, ja, ja tota, siellä tuli paranemista, ja, ja sitten myös niin kun henkilöitä, jotka, jotka aiemmin ä, ei voisi kuvitella, tietsä, ulospäin, että he haluavat ottaa, mutta 
Ihmiset on valmiita. Heidän sydämensä on valmiita, koska me tiedetään, että Jeesuksella on kaikki ratkaisut ja vastaukset. So there were so some physical healings, and then people who outwardly really didn't look like that person would need Jesus, but they were hungry and they were ready to receive when we preached the gospel to them. Nyt on aika juosta enemmän kuin koskaan Suomi Jeesukselle. Halleluja! It's time to run more than ever, Finland to Jesus. Share about, Christina, come, come back. Share, share some healing testimony. Share, share, share testimony about something that Jesus, Jesus has done. Yes. Joo, eli tota, yksi ilta uh, sielujenvoiton jälkeen mä menin sitten hampurilaisjonoon, kun alkoi olla vähän nälkä. One night after so winning, I went to get a burger, because I was a little hungry, I went to the line. To, in, yeah. Yeah. Ja sitten siinä oli yksi henkilö, joka piti päätä tälleen näin. There was a person who was holding their head like this. Ja sit mä ajattelin, että no hänellä on varmaan pää kipeä, ja menin kysymään, että hei, onko sulla pää kipeä, että voiko mä rukoilla sun puolesta? So I, I figured maybe they have a headache, so I went and asked them that, is your head hurting you, can I pray for you? Ja hän sanoi, että joo, kyllä. And, and they said yes. Ja, ja sitten hän parani, kun me Jeesuksen nimessä rukoiltiin. So I prayed in Jesus' name and, and they got healed. So ja, kyllä, joo, eli kipu lähti. Ja myös sitten hänellä oli... So the pain uh, left and then he or she? She also had a back pain. Joo, ja se myös parani. Ja sitten hän ja hänen tyttärensä rukoili Jeesuksen uh, sydämeen. Eli kun sä lasket... So, also the back pain, back pain got healed. And she and her daughter both then afterwards prayed the Jesus in their heart. Joo. Kun sä lasket kädet sairasten päälle, sä oot täytynyt pyöllä hengellä, niin ihmiset paranee Jeesuksen nimessä. When you lay hands on sick and you pray for them, people get healed in Jesus' name. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, God, God. Thank you. Thank you, Christina. I actually want to, before the next people come, I actually want to share also one testimony that I got on my phone because we got a lot of healings, a lot of healings happening. And I just, this, this week I got a message from Estonia and... Uh, We were there with Pastor Tommy on this uh, big conference and we were asked to minister to people who came for the prayer just a, just a few, few months ago, maybe two months ago. And, uh, and uh, I got a message over the social media from somebody saying that, hey, do you remember us? You laid hands on our baby. And baby was a little small baby, maybe nine months, I, 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 for, for what I estimate. And they had very violent seizures, and they were going through the brain scans. And they said they just came from the doctor, and there's nothing wrong. And baby have had no seizures since we laid hands on them. And, uh, you know, sometimes people are shy to just testify about the healings, but I just wanted to share that, that every day, we get messages every day day like in every single home group like like Christina was testifying on the streets you know people lay hands on sick you know and and people are getting healed it's it it's it's like normal it is normal in the church so but I just want to testify that because there are are people who don't believe and it's important that we actually share and we get the testimonies And, and, and so if you've been healed, do come, let us know. Even if you have a doctor's certificate, something that you can show to the outside world, you know, that, that would be great. And because somehow that helps in people's <laughs> unbelief. <laughs> We are like, Jesus heals. Yeah, of course he heals. <laughs> We believe that, but other people, they need a little bit of proof, you know. But it is, it is, it is the signs of wonders that follow the word. And it's a sign to the unbelievers. It's a sign to the world. And, and that's happening. That's happening even this week in a summer camp meeting. Hallelujah. But hey, come, come, Seva and, and uh, Victoria. I wanted to hear the rest of this testi testimony that they started last week. They got through the border last week if you were here on Sunday. But, uh, and that was a great start for a trip. But hey, come, clo come closer to the step into the lights so um uh, uh this was your last summer camp meeting i think we played hands on your last summer camp yes viime konfassa lasketti kädet ja päähän and uh, um to um and the license them to the to the ministry they had in their heart 
to go back to Russia where, where they are from and they speak Russian to preach the gospel. And this was now your second trip? Oh, tämä oli toinen matkala, kolmas. Oh, since last summer? Okay. The, the, what they're testifying now was the fifth trip, you know, since last summer camp. Are you ready for a new camp meeting this week? Yes. <laughs> uh, but this is the most recent trip, you know, their fifth trip. And, uh, and they had to go all the way from Estonia to get across the borders because... Unfortunately, we can't just cross it right now from Finland. But Estonians, there's a border crossing in Estonia and then up in Norway. So, um, Victoria, kerro, kerro mitä tapahtui. Joo, amen. Uh, kun päästiin Venäjän puolelle, tosiaan lähdettiin Petroskoihin. Yes, when we got to, to, got to the Russia, we were on our way to Petroskoi. Se on meidän synnyn kaupunki, ja siellä pidemme sellaisen uh, evankeliointi viikonlopun. That's the city that we were born, and we had a soul winning weekend in there. Uh, mentiin kaduille evankeliointi. Se oli eka kerta seurakuntalaisena mennä kadulle evankelioimaan. And that we went on the streets, and that was the first time that church went to the streets and preached the gospel there. Sitten sunnuntain kokoukseen tuli paljon uusia ihmisiä, 19 ihmistä rukoili pelastusrukoukseen. And in the Sunday service, new people came and 19 people prayed the prayer of salvation. Se avasi paljon uusia ovia. And that opened a lot of uh, new doors. Ja sieltä lähdettiin sitten Uhtuaan, mikä on Kalevala. So there we go to Uhtua, which is a Karelian city <laughs> or town. <laughs> Siellä oli sellainen pieni konservatiivinen seurakunta. There was a re- small, very conservative church. Saatiin siellä palvella ja sunnuntaina pyhäinkin kosketti ja puhutteli lähtee evankelioimaan eräälle miehelle ihan kotiovelle. And on Sunday Holy Ghost touched and, and, um, and spoke to me to go sowing, uh, to go testify to some uh, man even to, to, the, to the home, home, home. Siellä uh, rukoiltiin hänen puolesta. Hänellä oli jalka kipeä ja se parani. Uh, we prayed for this man, laid hands on him. He, his leg was sick and they got healed. Hän rukoili pelastusrukouksen. And he prayed the prayer salvation. Ja. Sieltä selvisi, että tämä kyseinen mies oli tuonut vähän harmia, tai paljonkin harmia monien vuosien ajan seurakunnalle uskovaiselle siellä kylässä. So then we find out that this man was somebody who people knew in that little little place and they brought a, they've had caused a lot of trouble uh, to the church through the years and to the believers through the years this man. Ja uh, sit kun me kerrottiin tää todistus pastorin vaimolle sen seurakunnan pastori vaimolle niin hän täyttyi ilolle me siellä yhdessä. <laughs> So when we shared this testimony to the, to the pastor's wife in that, that conservative small place, uh, the wife suddenly got filled with joy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> that was a revival. And that opened doors for you. Yes. That opened doors for you then to go to the other places. And doors to the Holy Ghost. Yes. Right? Hallelujah. Amen. Siis tosiaan ne täytyi olla niin vahvasti. They got filled with joy so strongly. That they needed to be carried away. So, so you had a revival in the church who didn't used to have a Holy Ghost, right? Yeah, awesome. Because of soul winning. Because you were obedient. Your wife. You both. <laughs> All right, sorry, I translate. Siis Petrosko oli ainoa kaupunki, joka oli täysin suunniteltu matkallemme. So when we went, Petrosko was the only, the first city that we had a plan that... To, to have an event. Ja kun siellä kokouksessa 19 ihmistä vastasi, vastasi alttari kutsuun. And when in that service 19 people answered to altar call. Niin useammasta paikasta meihin ottivat yhteyttä. Then people started taking, contacting us from several different places. Että, että tulkohan meillekin käymään. Hey, come to us, come, come visit us. Ja mehän vastattiin, että joo me tullaan. And so we answered, yes we come. Ja Kaikessa paikassa, jossa kävimme sitten. And so in every place we went. Ne olivat niin ihmeessä, että me todellakin tulimme sinne. They were so surprised that we actually went and came, like we said. Koska ne matkat olivat valtavia siellä. Because the, the 
distance were huge. Ja todistuksena myös Herran taloudenpidosta. So as a testimony from the Lord's uh, uh, provision. Et jossain kohtin siellä metsikössä Venäjän puolella. Somewhere in the forest in the Russia. Just could quickly say how many kilometers was the trip altogether? Mä en enää halua muistaa kuinka paljon se on. Uh, she, she remembers, she remembers. 4358. 4,300 and some kilometers was the trip altogether. Imagine all the way from Estonia, all the way to top of Norway in, on the Russian side of the border. Mutta tosiaan noin 3,000 kilometrin kohdalla. So somewhere around the 3,000 kilometers. Mä vähän laskin, että ei meillä riitä rahaa päästä takaisin Suomen puolelle. I, I started to count a little bit and we don't have enough money to come get back to Finland. Autokin hajosi ja me oltiin sitten viikko vielä odottamassa varaosia. The, the car broke down and we were waiting for one week to get a spare part. Niin sielläkin Herra on sitten ollut uskollinen meille. So, but God was faithful. Me ei lähdetty kadolle pyytämään rahaa ihmisiltä. We didn't go to the street and start begging for money. Me lähdettiin voittamaan sieluja. We went to so winning. Aina sinne Murmanskin saakka. All the way to Murmansk. Ja joka puolelta sitten vaan tuli se huolenpito. And everywhere the provision came, yeah. Ja se, että me saavuttiin tänne takaisin. And then we came here in one piece. Sekin jo ihmeen merkki. It's a sign I don't want to. Oh, that's awesome. But thank you, thank you guys, thank you guys. That blessed me so much because we can't go. You know what? You can go to places that not everybody can go. You know, and they were able to go and... You know, we understand the distances. Finland is a very vast land. And uh, they actually even got, without men mentioning the names, but because they were in Murmansk and all the way north, and they're on the Russian side, even some conservative churches on the Finnish side opened to them. Um, not because of uh, affiliation with us, but <laughs> but then when they heard, you know, how they've been winning souls and and because that's how it works. You gotta put your foot down. You gotta put your foot down. You gotta put your somebody knows who knows somebody. Somebody knows somebody. Somebody knows somebody. And that's what I love. And that's what we're gonna be doing in Finland this summer again. Hallelujah! Going to the city tour. But Esther, last but not least. Now Esther here. How long? Has your family been in church? In I think nine years. Nine years, and they they didn't join the first ones to the church. But I do remember before we started the church, um, we we had soul winners in Leppavara in in Sello when we started there in Leppavara, uh, 12 years ago, River Helsinki, and and Esther and Jacob met our soul winners. Yes. Oh, you see. <laughs> yeah. You went, you see, on the street, and they were very impressed how we were approaching people. You had been living in Finland how long before that? Twelve. Twelve. Twelve years. Yes. And then we are really led by the spirit here. But Pastor Tommy, when you shared the testimony about that lady who came from that small church and... Um, They had the breaking of the fast meeting and everybody was in a kitchen and she was the only one praying in a sanctuary. And that sparked her to, she had actually come to Finland to get married and that was a church that the, that the husband attended. And she came from a more of a spirit-filled background and was looking for a little bit different church, but that was the last straw. And, and I, I guess that's, that's around the time then when you came, you, you find, joined this church, but you had a... Um, You had met our soul winners on the streets and were very impressed uh, about that, how we win souls. And they've really been, been they are like a pillars, you know, they are, they've been a, been, a, been a church members. But I wanted to ask Esther to share about your first summer camp meeting. What happened? So it was one of the summer camp meetings. The whole, usually for summer camp meetings, we take off from, uh, from work. And this summer camp meeting was... I was like, the whole week I was so thirsty. I was so thirsty for the Lord. And in one of the meetings, uh, at the end, the pastor was ministering. And uh, I, I was sitting in the seat and uh, I, I told the Lord, Lord, I'm hungry. I'm thirsty. I need a touch from you. <laughs> and, I, and then I started speaking in tongues. Uh, and, and the Lord started filling me from top of my head to the tip of my toe. I felt the presence of God. I said, 
Lord, I'm not satisfied. I need more. I need your fire, Lord, because I was so hungry and thirsty. And I said, Lord, I need your fire. <laughs> and, you know, it's true. The Bible says, out of your belly shall flow the rivers of living water. And as I said, Lord, I need your fire. I need your fire. I just kept closing my eyes. And I just, it was just a conversation between me and the Lord. And literally, <laughs> the fire of God just touched me here. And I, I, was, I was bending. I couldn't even stand, you know, like this. I was screaming at the to top of my voice. And truly, you know, this mortal body cannot contain, you know, the real presence of God. It's too much to contain. That's why we shout. That's why we scream. That's why we fall down in the presence of God. And I was shouting and screaming. And then Pastor Tommy called me and he laid hands on me. I, I fell down in the power of God. It was, I mean, it was, I, I've, I've always experienced the anointing of God. But this was the fire. Oh, my goodness. It was so powerful. <laughs> it was so powerful. Seriously, it was so powerful. And then uh, the very next week, we went to visit our friends in California. And we, we have visited like America twice. And this was the third time. And for the very first time, we had the boldness to go and preach the gospel <laughs> in the, on the streets to many Americans and to many Spanish people there. And our friends had organized a birthday party for, our, for their daughter. And we were able to share the gospel to their friends. And we felt a bit sad because our friends were offended. And they are spirit-filled Christians. And they were like, just by telling the script, how, how are people going to be saved? But we know the power. It's not in the script, but it's the word of God, which touches people, which transforms people. We, do, we just trust that. And, and we thank God. It was the first experience, you know, to preach the gospel in America. It was, it was awesome. So I think the main ingredient, you know, for the fire is the hunger, is the thirst. When we really hunger and thirst for the fire, for the touch of God, God is not a respecter of person. He doesn't see, you know, what background, what, you, what experience. You can be young in Christ. You can be very old in Christ. But when you really hunger and thirst, you know, for the touch of God, God truly touches and transforms us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> now, when, uh, when the fire of God touched you, you I mean, you are very well-behaved conservative Indian <laughs> but you were really making some noise <laughs> did, 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 did you care what people think about you when that happened not really not really you know when the presence of God comes that's all what we need who cares what people think it's the it's the touch it's the work that the Lord does in us no people can do that you know only the fire only the Lord can touch us and Literally, I don't care what people think. I just want the presence of God. I just want the touch of God. <laughs> and, and, and like you said, you felt the, what happened after that. That was the fruit that you got bolder, you got free, you preached the gospel to people anywhere you went. Because the Holy Ghost is power to be a witness. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you. It was Thursday night. I remember this really well. It was Thursday night. And even this morning, I could ask, it just came to me during the worship. I'm, like, I'm going to ask Esther to share what happened on Thursday night of that camp meeting. And, uh, and uh, you know, oh, huh. we want everybody to get this. You know, if you have not been touched, you know, this is what we are about and it might take you Monday morning, Monday night, Tuesday morning, Tuesday night, like like it took her Wednesday morning, Wednesday night, Thursday morning and then a Thursday night. Um, I even remember we had an Indian visitor or speaker there and um, um, then somebody started screaming really loud on that aisle and we looked and we were like, oh, that's Esther. <laughs> We know the Holy Ghost. They knew the Holy Ghost. So they didn't mind it. Like we were so happy as pastors that happening to you, and uh, and uh, <laughs> and and uh, you recommend it to everybody, right? Of course, hundred <laughs> percent. Yes. And what did they need to know to get it? Just hunger and thirst for the Lord. And even if you don't have that hunger, you can ask the Lord, Jesus, I don't have the hunger. Please give me that hunger. And the Lord truly gives it. You know, he sees our heart. <laughs> Hallelujah. 
Yeah, I mean, that's what I'm saying. Hunger grows by eating. So really what you need to do is you need to come here tonight at 4. Then you need to, you have to, you know, to, to, to get free from your job. And you have to dedicate this week. And, and when you, you feed the good food, then you get hungrier, you get hungrier. Hunger grows by eating. You sit in the presence in here, there is no way it starts, it will start bearing fruit in your life. The word that is preached, all you need to do is clear your schedule and come here. If you're watching at home, clear your schedule and come here. Because this is the true work of the Holy Ghost. This is the real, it produces real fruit in your life. God, by his Holy Ghost, produces real things. Real things through you. The work he does in you, he can do through you in this world. He wants to use you. You are chosen. You are appointed. He wants to use you. Let the Lord do the work in you so you have power to come through you. Hallelujah. To the lost and dying world. And then we can get Finland saved. And Jesus can come back when all the world has heard. Hallelujah. That is our mission. If you choose to accept it, that is your mission. Go into all the world. Preach the gospel. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Pastor Tommy. So that everybody can get saved. Hallelujah. There's no better way, no better way to live. And come to us in cities after that. Hallelujah. I was very excited, actually, Christina, who testified um, when she came to church, um, then she, became, she was a single mom, and her daughter shares the same passion now. Maybe she was 10 at that time. I don't know. She shares the same passion with the souls, and she's coming to Bible school, River Bible School. She just graduated, Elisa, from the, from the high school and coming to River Bible Institute this fall. So it is so awesome, you know, serving the Lord, preaching the gospel. <laughs> Best thing ever. Uh, you know, just get, get your temple. God is building his church. God is building his church. You are his church. You are his temple. Get your temple here this week. Let him do the work through you so he can live in you mighty. And then you can do what he has called, what he has created, what you were born to do. Hallelujah. His call, his plan on your life. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, there's in many ingredients and, and things. We're going to go through the Word of God this week. And uh, I believe there's a, there's a breakthrough with your name on it. Amen. Some of you, maybe for the first time, maybe you've been just like uh, dear sister, you know, maybe from a more traditional conservative setting. And, and you're looking for that power to really do a transforming work in your life. You've never experienced the power and the fire of God. This, this week is for you. And then there's others that uh, you're desperate for moving forward and, and seeing the change that you need to see. Yes. And you, you realize that while you're grateful for everything the Lord has gotten done, you, you desire to see more. And it always begins with you that you're not saying, Lord, uh, bless this city and do a revival here and there. But you cry out to the Lord to do a transformative work in me. And many people pray like that religiously. But then when the Lord actually starts to shake some things up, they're like, I didn't order this. <laughs> so when the shaking begins, they're like, let me go back to that nice and comfortable place where I don't need to be challenged and I don't need to change. But guess what? This summer, we're changing some more. Say hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> and there'll be an, an eternal ingredient that'll be added. If, 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 if whatever the life has been before, it's time for new. And it's time for something that will make an eternal difference. Now, before I give you an opportunity to give on this beautiful Sunday... I want to just give you a few truths about an awesome topic that is related to you being blessed. Do you know that God is a good God? 
If you read through the first two chapters of the Bible in Genesis, you find out God created everything for the benefit of His children. And God is a good God. Even Hebrews 11.6 says that we must believe that He is. This is how we please Him. That we must believe that God is, and He's a rewarder of them that seek Him. He's a rewarder. He revealed Himself as a rewarder to Abraham, who is the father of our faith. And He's provided us ways to break out from this world system, from this world's financial system, the grip that this world has on many, many people. And He's provided us ways to connect to His economy and to live in that blessing that God has for us. Say with me, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I agree with your confession. So God is a loving Father. Jesus came to show us the Father. He is, God is a loving Father who provides good things for your children. How many of you who are mothers or fathers, you want to provide good things for your children? Everyone who is a parent, their hands should go up because that's what's built in us by our Heavenly Father. And He prospers us because He has made some specific terms of the covenant with us and as we follow his instructions, there will be blessing. Say amen. amen. Let me read these verses of scripture to you. First from Malachi 3 and 10. Malachi 3 and 10. The Bible says, Bring all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. And try me now in this, says the Lord of hosts. If I will open up for you the windows of heaven and pour you out so much blessing that there will not be room enough to receive it. Say with me, that sounds good. What if you would have different kinds of problems the rest of this year? Like you don't have room to put it in. The blessing. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sake, so that he will not destroy the fruit of thy ground, nor shall the vine fail to bear fruit for you in the field, says the Lord of hosts. And then the words of Jesus from Luke 6 and 38. Luke 6 and 38, the Bible says... Give, and it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be put into your bosom. For with the same measure that you use, it will be measured back to you. Say amen. amen. So who determines the measure? Is it God or is it you? Now, still in 2 Corinthians chapter 9. If you're not keeping up with me between these verses, just look over your sh you know, shoulder to your neighbor's Bible. If they are faster, just so you stick with me. 2 Corinthians 9 verse 6 says, But this I say, he who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. And he who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. So let each one give as he purposed in his heart, not grudgingly or of necessity. For God loves a cheerful giver. Say with me, cheerful giver. Yeah. Amen. Say, what are you doing? I'm just checking. If we have any of those here today. Looks good. And God is able to make all grace abound towards you, that you always having all sufficiency in all things may have an abundance for every good work. As it is written, he dispersed it abroad, he has given to the poor, his righteousness endures forever. Now may he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food, supply and multiply the seed you have sown and increase the fruits of your righteousness. Amen? So there is a blessing that's required for us to carry for the purpose that we are on the earth. So for the vision, there is provision. I don't know if you've realized it yet, but it's a requirement for you to be blessed. Some of the basic things that Jesus instructed us to do, like taking care of others who I need, requires us to be blessed. I've been in that situation where I'm really frustrated, where I've seen someone in need, but I couldn't help them. I think that's a good irritation to have. Not to feel bad about yourself and guilty and condemned for the rest of the year, but let that stir you up to realize, I want to live and walk in the blessing that God has for me. I need to be blessed. So that I can be a blessing. So God loves us. He wants to provide us with good things. He's made everything for us. 
Even, and Timothy says, for all the good things for us to enjoy, but there is a purpose of being a blessing in the blessing of God so that you could be a channel of blessing for everything that the Lord is doing. So that everything that God is doing in Finland, in your neighborhood, everything that God's wants to sh God wants to show His grace and mercy towards and His compassion towards other people as well, you can be a channel for that. And in Deuteronomy 8 and 18, some of you are familiar with this verse, Deuteronomy 8 and 18 says, And you shall remember the Lord your God, for it is He who gives you the power to get wealth, that He may establish His covenant, which He swore to his fa your fathers, as it is this day. So Israel is about to go into the promised land and God is giving them their future ahead of time and saying, you're going to be blessed. You're going to live in beautiful houses. You're going to be able to enjoy the land. You're going to live in the blessing. But make sure you don't forget me, for it is I who give you the power to get the wealth, the great wealth. Say amen. amen. And one of the ways that connects us to, and really a foundation way to the blessing of God, is our tithe, which is our covenant response to God for everything He's done. Now in the New Testament, you really see examples of 100%. You see that at the cross, when Jesus died for us, and then you see giving of 100%. But you got to start with something. So I'm going to give you a few truths, just briefly. And summarizing on the subject of tithing. Tithing is God's way of financing his kingdom on the earth. So that the gospel can go forth and people can be saved, healed, delivered and, free, and be set free from Satan. Say amen. amen. So tithing is really the primary way for the local church to be provided for. And not other things like uh, trying to... Uh, come up with some sort of a special program that people could get interested about uh, to show a special film or a video so that people can get passionate and, 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 and get a, a desire to be part of what the work, uh, the work of the Lord is, 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 is accomplishing. But really, it's, it's by our tithe that the work can go uh, further unhindered. Now, the Bible talks about the tithes as the 10%. It's a 10% of all your income, and it belongs to the Lord. Whatever is your income, everybody here has different ways of you receiving. Whatever, whatever comes in out of that, 10% belongs to the Lord. You can find that in Leviticus 27. It is holy to the Lord. And then Bible teaches that the tithe is holy to the Lord, and it's a sacred ordinance. That means, just like other things in the Bible that God commanded us to do, we take communion regularly. Is a tithing is part of what we do. Then tithing was instituted and practiced before the law. Abram tithed to Melchizedek 430 years prior to the law of Moses. That can be found in Genesis 14. And tithing later was incorporated into the law of Moses and was regular practice during the dispensation of the law. So later on, tithing became as part of the law, but it was there way before there was ever the law of Moses. You can find that in Leviticus 27 and Deuteronomy 26. The Lord Jesus Christ himself was a tither and he confirmed the practice of tithing in the New Testament. You can find that in Luke 11, for example, and then further in Hebrews chapter 7, where we can see Jesus as our high priest receiving the tithes, which is a further proof that it is for the day and for every New Testament believer. And then, like we read from Malachi 3, tithes should be given to the storehouse, which today is your local church where you regularly attend and receive your spiritual food and nourishment in order to grow in your Christian life. Hallelujah. Yes. Tithing also involves worship unto the Lord. It's a confession of your faith over the tithe that declares your redemption from Satan's bondage and claiming of your tithing benefits. 
There are two major rewards for, that belong to the faithful, uh, to faithful tithers. One, you release the windows of heaven so that financial blessing can come to you. And secondly, you activate God's rebuke against Satan. And the devourer is bound from stealing your finances or your increase. And Malachi 3, the verses we just read, is the only place in the Bible where God challenges the believer to put him to the test financially. Tithing is the only place in the scripture that, scripture that God undertakes to rebuke and resi resist Satan, the thief for our sakes. We've been studying the subject of believer's authority in the home groups in the last several weeks. You know that if you don't take your place in the authority that God has delegated to you, God will not do it on your behalf. You have to take a stand. But this is a place in the Bible as we honor him with our tithe and we bring the holy part of, of your increase to him. He has promised to rebuke the enemy for our behalf. Also, every Christian who isn't honoring the Lord with the tithe is actually robbing God. Dr. Holmes, Dr. Todd Holmes, who was with us for the Pastors and Leaders Conference, I like what he said. He said he wouldn't go into a house of a non-tither because he wouldn't go to somebody's house who's robbing from God because they will certainly rob from you. So in order to live in the blessing that God has for you and not under, under the curse, there is a financial bondage that's in the world because there's so much that finances affect when it comes to our personal life, our family's life, our, 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 our business life. And to live in a covenant with God where we honor Him with the first and the best is such a privilege and an honor. Tithing is also an acknowledgement that God is the owner of all, that you are only a steward or a trustee over your human estate. So He owns everything. And by bringing your tithe, you recognize God is the owner of everything. He owns the cattle on a thousand hill, the silver and gold, gold is His. He owns the earth and the fullness thereof. But you are a steward and a trustee of what He's trusted to you. And that is a sign of it as you bring your tithe. Tithing is also being a good steward. Say with me, good steward. Good steward. In other words, it's acknowledging the Lordship of Jesus in a very practical and tangible way. Tithing is declaring that God is our source and that He has blessed and provided for us. So it's recognizing that, hey, what I've received is from the Lord. It's very difficult to get greedy when you always praise the Lord whenever money comes in. Yeah. First thing you think about, praise the Lord. I'm coming to the house of the Lord to bring this in because the Lord has increased me. Amen? And remember, same place, 2 Corinthians 9, He gives seed to the sower and bread for eating. That's a promise that he's made for us. Amen. So we are to be good stewards of the money and resources God has entrusted to us. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. So tithing is the starting point in our stewardship and the foundation in our give, giving to God. So it's the foundation. It's the starting point. We're bringing the best in the first. We recognize his lordship, authorship, and his ownership of everything. And being a good steward, it's very important that you learn to operate with good principles and wisdom in your finances. But biblically, the foundation of that is acknowledging God first, because He's the one who is the source of everything, all the good things. Amen? And God, really our slogan for the church is putting God first. God should be the first in our lives. The tithe is the first fruits. The tithe, tithe is the first tenth. It is the first 10% of your income. If you give offerings and don't give tithe, then you will destroy your harvest because the devourer, the devil, devil is not rebuked. So that offering and the giving and extra things come after the tithe. And let me say this. You will never regret in the end of your life being part of the kingdom of God. This is why I do not understand where people discourage others to bring their tithes into the house of the Lord. There's a lot of things that you may regret in the end of your life. That why did I use that money for this and this and that? Why did I use something for this? Because it was just worthless and rather caused many bad things to take place instead of good things. But you'll never regret giving to God in the end of your life. Hallelujah. 
So in other words, whenever something comes in, you recognize God is the source, he's the Lord, you are a steward, and you separate from that 10% and you bring it. Whenever that is, if it's once a month, once, once a week, once in two weeks, and if you're in business, it may come in a larger portions. If you're in farming, there's usually a season when you get the harvest and then you sell your harvest and you get the income, but then the rest of the year there is just living off of that. In a situation like that, it's very important to have good stewardship and know how to handle your resources. So given the tithe, is acknowledge, it, it acknowledges where your heart is and it acknowledges the sovereignty of God. Tithing acknowledges where your heart is. And we must realize that tithing didn't begin and end with the law, but it is an eternal foundation and principle of God's word. Before and after. God doesn't ask you to tithe as a punishment. He wants, to, wants you to tithe so that he can bless you. How many of you know God is a good God? He wants to pour out his blessing upon your life. But this being also our gathering for people and of course if you're visiting here you're more than welcome to be a visitor here and join us this week from other churches wherever you're from but i'm talking also to the people that are this is your home you are setting an example for others let me try this side you're setting an example for others in other words when people see you putting God first in a practical and tangible way. Now, some people take the verse that Jesus said, you know, don't let your left hand know what your right hand is doing and so forth. But really, mainly that's talking about when you're giving to the poor. So you should not make a scene when you're helping someone in need. Who would like somebody to make a scene if they help you in need? Hey, I'm helping them. No, you're, you're supposed to do it in a way that honors that person and respects their dignity and honor them because they may be going through some things, but you're going to help them and they're going to get back on their feet, right? But when you're giving to the Lord, you can see things throughout the Bible where like with King David, who it was recorded in the Bible how much he personally gave. Sometimes we need examples of extravagant giving so that people can understand, hey, there's actually people that are giving to the Lord in these days. So that it's made public, hey, I am going to give this and this amount. Now, I don't like naming amounts because amounts are different for everybody. For some of you, 10 euros would be a huge offering. For some of you, 10,000 euros is not even an offering. It's just clearing out, you know, evening out the amount on your bank balance so that it's more even and looks nicer. So you just kind of put it away. I guess I can give it in the offering. Some of you need to smile. I'm prophesying about your future <laughs> bank balance. Some of you are like, mm, I can't believe. So it's, it's different for every individual. What's, what's big for you is not big for someone else. What's small for you is not small for someone else. So... It's got to do with what you give before. 10% is 10% is 10% for everybody. Amen. But the amounts are different because it's 10%. So you give. So God is looking to bless you. He's looking to be a blessing to you. He's not looking to be against you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the tithing Christian will see the hand of the Lord in his finances. We can never outgive God. Remember, 90% of your income with God's blessing is more than 100% without it. Yeah. Say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So when we're establishing some foundational things that we want you to also be able to show to others, things like this are foundational things that as you teach them to your children, as you by example show them for people around you, they will produce good fruit. When the husband in the house says, we are going to give God the best and the first. 
We are tithers, we are givers. We are hospitable. We are blessing. We are involved in the house of God. We will be in the house of the Lord early on Sunday morning. We will praise God. Whether it rains, shines, mosquitoes, no mosquitoes, no mosquitoes inside, praise the Lord. Whether it's muddy, whether it's flood, whether it's hurricane, whether it's, it's a tornado, whether it's earthquake. Shaking in the land. We will be in the house of the Lord. When that decision is made, something happens in the lives of children. The other option is, well, I'll see what happens. I'll just sleep here. The Lord can see I've been working hard during the week. You can be sure that your children are looking very carefully. And I'm not talking about religion, tradition, doing something out of religious obligation of guilt and shame. I'm talking about motivated by love of God. He is first. If you would be on trial for being a Christian, would there be enough evidence to convict you? Well, uh, we went through their schedule, uh, we went through their uh, affiliations, we went through their finances. We couldn't find any proof whatsoever that they are a Christian. Some of you would be guilty <laughs> so badly. We looked at one time, we looked at the first bank statement, and we highlighted everything that had to do with the kingdom of God, and this person is highly guilty for being a Christian. He's going straight to jail. Nobody's going to jail today. Smile. It was an illustration. If you would be on trial for being a Christian, that you would have proof. You see, people are looking, people are observing, and you know, in the light of what the Lord has done for us, it's really the minimum we can do is to start off by deciding in our hearts we will put God first, we will give Him 10%. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. Say praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lord is good. Because whatever you become, it, you know, people don't just, they, they don't just do what you say. They don't just get what you say. They do and they hear what you're doing. So when in your life God is first, Bible says in Isaiah 1, be willing and obedient. Sometimes we're obedient but not willing. So you got to make a choice. Not only are you obedient, but you're actually willing. That means you're smiling while you're doing it. That's why G the Lord, Lord says in His Word, 2 Corinthians 9, that He loves a cheerful, joyous, prompt to do it giver whose heart is in His giving according to the Amplified Bible. A cheerful giver. So not only are you obedient in bringing the gifts, but you are actually happy about it. <laughs> so make sure what you give today, smile and just rejoice. And do a little bit of a Filipino dance. If you don't know how to do it, Pastor Jimmy will show you. How, how is it done? Let's see it. Okay, there it is. Some of the Nigerians were like, please. We'll pick on you another day, okay? But if you don't have a dance, you can copy the Filipino one. For the day. Amen? Hallelujah. God's not looking for your, 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 a bad outcome in your life. He sent His Son because He loves you. And not only he, does He care for you, passionately love you, but He cares passionately about His church. And is it right, let me ask you, is it right that there's gazillion million, that's not an actual number, but just throwing things out, that there's so many things in the world that people are passionate about and they're happening and then would God's own people not be passionate about what He's doing on the earth today? And this area and subject is so linked to your heart. See, you can give without loving, but you cannot love without giving. You can, people, you know, they feel like pressure, whatever, they can give something. But when you love, you will give. So if you haven't made this choice, we can make it bold. You can testify about it. Say, I am a tither. I am a giver. I am a blessing. And I walk in the blessing of God. I'm giving Him 
my first, and I'm giving him my best. And the hand of the Lord is on my life, and we will see what God has for this nation fulfilled in Jesus' name. And even this week, while we're speaking, there is a shaking taking place in the land. There's a shaking in the financial realm. There's no lack of money in Finland. It's just in the wrong hands. But Lord is looking through right now in this group and see who can I put it to? Who can I shake the finances to? Maybe he's found a few people, even this morning, who will be faithful with everything that he trusts you with. Hallelujah. And you'll be a channel for the blessing of heaven to flow through you. And there'll be cities that will be shaken. There'll be whole areas that will be shaken. And the funds will be released for the kingdom of God. The resources of Finland, the mineral, the nature's resources, ultimately are set apart for the gospel in this nation. So I speak to all the mineral wealth, the trees, everything, that those things are set apart and actually set, set apart and dedicated for the work of the gospel in our nation. So there'll be no lack, there'll be no need, nothing missing, nothing broken, nothing lacking in the land that even now there's a shaking taking place. That the resources that are meant for the kingdom of God are being released for God's people to use for His work in this land. In Jesus' name. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. Pastor Sander, would you help me with the instructions this morning? Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Well, would the usher stand up and, and pass on the offering materials as you ask the Lord what you have you do this morning? The Bible really says, God says in Malachi 3, that prove me, says the Lord, and shall I not open the gates of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there will not be room enough to receive it. So we prove him. He tell, tells us to prove him when we do our tithes and offerings. She, he promised that he will open up the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it. So that's God's word. And then we'll do our part and we obey that. So, so ask the Lord what he have you do. If you're watching at home, ask the Lord also what, he, what he'd have you do this morning. You bring your tithes to your local storehouse where you receive the word, where you are fed so that there will be food also during the summertime. If you are looking at the... Um, uh, if you are using the materials uh, that are coming down the road with the with the promise slip, I ask that um, that just recommend that with the regular tides, you just use the regular account number with the regular reference seven zero nine zero seven zero nine zero is the reference for the tithe and the normal normal account, and that is the. That is the um, cheapest way of giving, actually, with no cost whatsoever. If you are visiting here today and you just want to sow, sow seed, or if you anyone else you want to sow seed, there's other, also other facilities available for you. You can do uh, mobile pay 62000, mobile pay 62000, and uh, obviously you can also give with the promise note and in a little bit we're going to, going to have a card machine here up front where you can come and give with the card credit card debit card mobile pay apple pay and whatever um, they do receive so everybody should have a way to give if you need a help ask usher or ask your neighbor if you need a pen ask for your neighbor and we'll give everybody a little bit of time to get ready and prepare for your for your giving this morning and then I'm, I'm still gonna pray a blessing over you who is expecting a great summer this summer amen hallelujah 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 you know as you sow it will be given to you and what a way to live this is our God's economy that he's given us a seed and and we can sow and he always multiplies it it's a Bible promise as the seed multiplies 30 60 and 100 fold when you sow it to the good ground so obviously sow it to the gospel hallelujah 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 anybody need still any help if you need anything from the ushers i see there are people people typing in obviously you can keep with your uh, with your bank 
application straight up to with the looking at the directions from from the cards we have a separate account number for building fund for those of you if you want to sow into the building specifically um it's a um then do do that separately it's a total different account so note to that that you can get a get a slip for those from the ushers and then um there's some other other info there's there's, there's a partnership and for those who are not members but want to be in a covenant with us and uh, and a media fund. If you're watching home, you can also follow what is there on the screen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Does so somebody still need time here with those things? It's not that we are in a hurry here. We have a, we came to worship Jesus this morning. Hallelujah. And this is a this is a great great moment this is definitely a time for breakthroughs but hold your offering as you attach your faith to it you know they'll they'll be they'll be everything we do we do in faith you know you heard the word of god and 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 we just act on it and i'm telling you it works it works when you take him off off his word so i'm gonna pray for your offering when you hold it hold it hold your hold your credit card hold your hold your phone whatever you're giving later on hallelujah Lord, I thank you for the seed, and I thank you that you bless the seed, that you bless the sower this morning. I thank you that you promise that you increase us, you increase us, and you increase our children. Thank you that our seed shall be known amongst the nations. Thank you that every single person in this plain sound of my voice who is part of this will multiply. I ask that you will surprise them this week. As you said, prove me. And shall I not open the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing? Thank you, those who are proving you this morning. I'll thank you that you will, with your goodness, with your kindness, you meet them and you'll surprise them with the blessings this week. I just thank you for blessings. I decree increase for those who are taking time of work, those who are taking time of their business, that this week, as they are seeking you, putting you first, there will be your extra blessing. There will be your extra provision. There will be your extra favor with the boss there will be also the wealth of the wicked laid up for the just when you are shaking shaking when you are shaking this land in Jesus name I thank you that the wealth of the wicked shall come for the just and the church will be glorious in the end times and we will have all the finances to 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 get the gospel out to the far flung corners of the earth all the way to the north all the way all the way to the north and all the way to the all the areas of the world that that people have in their hearts thank you for the provision thank you for multiplication you bless bless our seed and you multiply it on our seed will be a blessing in the nations our seed shall also take over the desolate cities in this land and those that are blessed of the lord how the righteous shall be the blessed of the lord and people will see us and they will notice who are these happy and blessed people hallelujah hallelujah and we give all glory we get to give all glory to you lord hallelujah just thankful for this week hallelujah go ahead pastor bucket and just thank you i'm just so thankful for this i'm just just thank you for the river church i'm so thankful for the 12 years that we've been able to sow the seed in this earth so that his credit card machines to do come also that we've been able to sow the seed in this land that we've been able to sow the seed in this land and sow the word of god in this land for all the happy that the, the, the gospel that we've been preaching on the streets and the, all the all the happy happy people freely 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 preaching the gospel on the streets and thank you <laughs> whoo, whoo. hallelujah hallelujah that we get to reap we get to reap the benefits of our sowing Hallelujah. Those who be sowing, even sometimes sowing in tears, that you promise is that they get to reap with joy. Hallelujah. If the bucket has passed you, you can stand up and give him praise. Give him praise. Give me praise as we enter into the time of praise. Hallelujah. He is so good. He is so good. Any cheerful givers in this place? Cheerful givers in this place. Cheerful givers in this place. Hallelujah. 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 Let's give it
Hallelujah. Just grab your Bible in your hand and just lift it up high. Lord, we thank you for your word this morning, that your word never returns void, and that, Lord, we are under your word, that you watch over your word to perform it. Thank you, Lord, that signs and wonders follow the preaching of your word. We thank you that your word is truth. Thank you that we are corrected, changed by your word. By your word, faith comes. And we thank you, Lord, that your word is a discerner of thoughts and intents of the heart. And Lord, we thank you that even this morning, it'll be unto us according to your word. Lord, we thank you that by your word, your power is made manifest and change comes. We receive your word today with joy. Say hallelujah. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Thank you, worship team. This week, we're going to have a proper time to praise the Lord. We're going to praise, sing, give glory to God. Amen. And it's going to be phenomenal. I'd like you to go with me to the book of Mark, chapter 10. Say with me, shaking. shaking. Mark, chapter 10. And I'll read to you from the New King James Version, from verse 46. If you're hungry and thirsty today, for the Lord to move and to, to touch your life. I encourage you to just step out of the realm of just being a participator and just looking and, and just spectating and just to be adjoined as one of the people in the service, but really actively get engaged with, the, with, the, with what the Lord is doing. It always amazed me that even in the time when Jesus was on the earth, there were people who didn't get anything, and if they got something, they got upset. Isn't that amazing to you? I mean, this is the Lord Jesus Christ himself. And we want to be like him, but we're not him. But Jesus speaking, Jesus ministering, Jesus, you know, doing what his Father's will is, and people would get upset. angry, didn't want to listen. After the miracle of multiplying the fish and the bread, people were waiting for food. Is he going to give us food today? I Hopefully he finishes his message soon because I'm hungry. You think this is a fish day? I hope it is. I'm hungry. And this is the Lord himself. So that tells us something about the importance of coming to receive the word with joy and being hungry and thirsty and coming with expectancy, right? Because it would seem to me that by your expectation, by your thirst, by your hunger, by your desire for heavenly things, you can uh, either miss out of what... Uh, the Lord is doing, or you can be a participator regarding the things that the Lord is doing. I don't want anyone to miss out on the things that the Lord has for you today. I want you to fully join in. Say amen. amen. Like fully. Fully join in. And if perchance there's someone here who just came because it's a Sunday church out of religious habit. Now, um, in Finland, I've noticed there's not too many Finns that come to church because of religious habit. Their religious habit is stay as far away from the church as possible if they have a religious habit. But if there's someone here, you just came in, kind of popped in because it's a customary to you to show up somewhere. I would encourage you to get hungry for what the Lord has. And join us also this week. 
let this be a week of shaking in your uh, heart, in your home, in your, in, in your uh, realm of influence. Let this be a, a major groundbreaking uh, week. Mark 10 and verse 46 says, Now they came to Jericho. As he went out of Jer Jericho with his disciples and a great multitude, blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sit, sat by the road begging. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Then many warned him to be quiet, but he cried out all the more, son of David, have mercy on me. So Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. Then they called the blind man, saying to him, Be of good cheer, rise, he's calling you. And throwing aside his garment, he rose and came to Jesus. So Jesus answered and said to him, What do you want me to do for you? The blind man said to him, Rabuni, that I may receive my sight. Then Jesus said to him, Go your way, your faith has made you well. And immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus on the road. I want to take just a moment to talk to you about a subject. What do you want? Jesus invited this blind man to come, come forward. And he said to him, what do you want me to do for you? What do you want? In verse 51, what is it that you want? Sometimes I feel like in people's life, people are like, I don't know. What do you want? I don't know. I, I thought you would know. <laughs> what do you want? What is it that you want? Well, I don't like this, I don't like that. But what do you want? Well, I have trouble in my life, but what do you want? What is it that you want? What's the desire? What is it that you want? Well, I want to sit in church and look pretty. You can check that off the list. I guess your life mission has been fulfilled. What is it that you want? What's the desire? What's burning in your heart? In your personal life? Well, I don't, I don't know. I'm, I'm not going to get it anyway. So I don't know. What do you want? Jesus asked this blind man. He came. He threw off his garment. He threw off his cloak, which identified him as a blind man. He left it behind him and got into Jesus' presence. That tells me he was expecting something to happen. But Jesus asked him. Well, it was pretty obvious. The guy was blind. He's screaming, mercy on me. And now he's before Jesus. Jesus said, what is it that you want? What do you want? Now, years ago, for the first time, some of the first times I was in, uh, in a beautiful nation of Latvia. It's a phenomenal nation. But people have a certain mindset because of the national history. Same way as Israelites had a certain mindset coming out of Egypt, out of slavery. And what the Lord did with me as I visited Latvia was he helped me to see the same mindset right here in Finland. It comes out a different way, but it's basically the same mindset. So I wanted to begin... And this is what the Lord impressed on my spirit to start this week to ask him this question. What is it that you want? Many believers are just coasting like, 
you know, dead fish in the river. <laughs> Going through. Every wind and stream is just taking them down the stream. But you notice the live fish are actually going upstream. They're going up the stream and they're, they're, they're going and they're, 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 they're producing and they're multiplying and they're alive and there's, there's life in them and there's, there's, there's excitement and there's movement and there's strength. So what is it that you want? Well, I just, sometimes I feel like many Finns, they just want to be in a place where nobody's looking at them. Pastor, what I want is, is I don't want to be ashamed. I don't want to be put in the spot. Many people, you know, I don't want to be in front of people. That's what I want. <laughs> I want to stay away from large crowds. I was sharing a message on the subject of being delivered from fear, and I was going through different phobias. And you know that there's a phobia for everything. There's a, there's a phobia for being alone, and there's a phobia for being with too many people. There's a phobia for being a closed space, and there's a phobia for being in the wide space. That's why I think some things like small apartments. That was a poor attempt for a joke. But what is it that you want? I want to stir something within you because sometimes we've been through life and certain situations and we just come up with the attitude, well, pastor, what I want is to survive this Sunday without dying. That's not a very good goal. I said that's not a very good goal. God is not in, 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 in the business of having you just survive. God wants to bring you out into the life and life more abundant. Into revival where things are going to happen. But what is it that you want? God doesn't just go into people's homes and grab them by the shoulders and says, You're coming to the life and life more abundant. Arr. But, but, but God, I just want to sleep. No, you're coming out. What is it that you want? This is what happened with blind Bartimaeus. He got sick and tired of being sick and tired. He got irritated for sitting there in that same spot. He had been there for years. Many people, what's happened to them is that those situations, circumstances around them, they have made those things their identity. Bartimaeus wasn't even a man. He was a blind man. Amen. What's the identity that you've taken upon your life? And now you just see, well, I'm this shy person. Who told you that you are a shy person? Well, on the first grade when I was in school, my mother told me that I'm just a little shy. I'm just a little reserved. Well, this week you will get unreserved. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Sometimes when you're going through a battle, that battle can try to come and be your identity. Well, I'm sick. I don't agree with that. There may be a sickness attacking you, but you don't may need to make that your identi identity. Bartimaeus was known as a black. Well, but pastor, I'm a poor lady. My mother was poor. My grandmother was poor. My whole family has been poor. So that has become your identity. And whenever something is happening, you first get excited. Praise the Lord, something is happening. But then you're oh, I'm poor. In other words, your identity that is in the wrong place is holding you back from where God wants to take you. There needs to be a shaking in your life. Many people have a national identity and we love the nations. And we appreciate the nations and all the variety of different cultures and everything. And we celebrate it and it's good. 
But you cannot make your primarily, ident primarily your identity based on where you're from. Because when you are born again, you become part of the family of God. You're born again. You become new. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. When Bartimaeus heard that Jesus was calling him, he threw off his cloak. He threw off his old identity and said, ah, mom, this is my day. I'm going before the Lord. I'm going to receive what I have. But Jesus still asked him, what is it that you want? I hear heaven asking many people here on this beautiful, solemn, dignified Sunday assembly. That what is it that you want? You want to be just a number amongst the many? We're not here to perform some religious ceremony to try to put you into conformity so that you would never amount to anything. We're here to set the fire into your heart so that you will do what God's called you to do. But God doesn't do things outside of the will that you have in your heart. That will has to line up with His will. What is it that you want? Well, I just want to live a peaceful life. Yeah, okay. Have fun with that. That's, that's a choice you can make. Well, I just want to be extremely normal believer. I'm just going to say you may not be comfortable in this church. Somebody's thinking, okay, that this is the final day I'm visiting the, this church. I was thinking about joining, but I, I'm not. I just want to have an extremely normal life. Let me tell you right now, things are shaking. Even if you wanted to live your little pretty Christian life where you don't make any ripples and you don't offend anybody, every single week it's becoming more and more difficult. And that's not the life that Jesus has destined for any one of us. The Bible says when the apostles came to town, there was a declaration that those people that have turned the whole world upside down have come to our town. That doesn't sound like, okay, we're going to have a little quiet time. Church has become a place, you know, in general, not here, but generally, you know, place of quietness. We just, we just cease in our in our busy lives, and we bow down for 20 minutes and light up a candle. You won't find that, that anywhere in the Bible. Jesus didn't light up candles. He came to set the fire of God inside the hearts of people. And when they went with that fire, there's, there's, there's going to be a shaking and there's going to be a trembling. So I want to just stir something on this beautiful Sunday morning. What is it that you want? Well, pastor, there's so many troubles in my life. So did Bartimaeus. He was blind. He was a beggar. With the great clans, I don't think there's any blind beggars here. But even that was the case. This message is for you as well. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus asked him, what is it that you want me to do for you? He wanted to hear from Bartimaeus, what is it that he wanted? And notice, Jesus was going from one place to another place. He was busy. All the time, he was, he was on his assignment. He was about his father's business. He was... Coming from somewhere, he was going from somewhere. He only had th about three and a half years for his time of ministry. And he completed his ministry to his final, the, really the reason why he came to the cross. To pay the price for you and me. The cross that we have in this church, it's a real cross. It's a solid cross. It's extremely heavy. Because Jesus was a real man. And he had a real body, and that body was nailed to a real tree. There was real pain, but he did it for us. Hebrews 12 says, for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross. And that joy was you, that joy was me. He was able to see what his great price 
what his great sacrifice would accomplish. And that was the joy that he was able to see before him while he endured everything he went through on that cross. And he paid that great price so you could have life and you could have it more abundantly. Not to put you in a religious coma so you would just come to church sometimes like, oh, I guess I'm one of those Christians. Know that there would be a passion and burning and fire on the inside of you. And you say, whatever is standing before me has to get out of the way because I've come to receive what the Word of God promises to me. I've come to receive. This is what I want. I want what heaven has for me. What is it that you want? What do you want this morning? What's burning on the inside? What's your passion? What's, what is it that it may be something to do with your character? Maybe you've come this week to this week and series of meetings and this summer camp meeting so that you would see a change. In certain area of your life. You, you may have something that you need physically healed in your body. And you said, that's, that's what I want, Lord. That's what I want. I, want. I want to receive an answer for this. Matthew 7, 7 says that if we ask, we will receive. If we ask. Everyone who asks, receives. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. But I can't answer this question for you. What is it that you want? This church is not about a bunch of religious zombies who can't even open up their mouth. But people that are passionate about what God has for them. So they can say, this is what I want. This is what's burning on the inside of me. This is what God has me on the earth for. We don't need another lukewarm Christian who's just coasting along. Jesus was going from one place, going to another place. But there was a sound that came from Bartimaeus that caused Jesus to stand still and say, bring him here. Amen. Hebrews 13 and 8 says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. But I can't answer this question on your behalf what is it that you want? Well, pastor, I just want to live a peaceful life. I just want to live a comfortable life. I just want people to like me. What is it that you want? I just want to make a good living. It's not a bad thing that you would like people to like you or or you would have peace in your life, or that you would make a good living. But what is it that you want? What is it that in your life that you really, really want? Is that all you want? Is all you want is survival? Is all you want is just to make it through the week alive? Now, even if you would get no food, just with water you can last for several weeks. Hello? Your body will be okay for a few weeks. Some of you got extra reserves. Don't point at anybody. But what is it that you truly, really want? Because I would rather have just a dozen hungry people than a big group room full of people who have no idea what they even want. God has chosen us, you and my, me, in these final days to live in this hour. I believe it's for a purpose. But we got to decide what is it that we want. If he opens the blind eyes. If he brings the dead back to life. If he can bring the fish... Fish from the water that will pay for your taxes. If he can multiply that tens of thousands can eat from a little boy's lunch. The problem is not what you think it is. It's time for the limitations to come off. What is it that you want?
You want to just have a normal life? You're not here because you want to have a normal life. You're here because you want to have a heavenly life. What's burning within you? Are you just taking everything that's been given to you? From a young child, from a young man, young, one young woman, whatever label they put on you, you just take it. You just say, go to this school, you went to that school, get this job, you went to that, that. But what is it that you really want? I want to challenge you. What do you want to see in your life? What do you want to see in the end of the year? If you're already up in the age, let's say you're 70 or 80 years old, what do you want to see for the remainder of your life? If you're young, just even under 20, you're a young man, young lady, what is it that you want to see in your life? Jesus told and asked Bartimaeus, what is it that you want for me to do for you? Hallelujah. What do you want the Lord to do for you? What do you want? Well, I wasn't expecting a question. I thought I'm just going to come here and listen and analyze in my intellectual mind in the light of the scripture whether the preacher is, is, is in the correct or in the wrong. I want to provoke you, challenge you because you don't realize how much potential you have. There's many believers that are sitting by the wayside like Bartimaeus with their identity, with their cloak on and say, I'm just a poor little Finnish Christian. I'm just this crippled person. I'm, 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 I'm mentally handicapped. I'm oversensitive, the Finnish favorite word. I'm this, I'm that. And that identity has become what's held you back. What is it that you want? In 2 Corinthians 5.17, the Bible says, When we are in Christ, we have become a new creation. New creation. In Christ, you've become a new creation. That means... You're no longer who you used to be. Do you know that animals can be conditioned to stay within certain boundaries? All kinds of creatures, when they are bound, when they're held captive, in their mind, they're still thinking that they are held captive, but even though the door is already open. When you were born again, the door was opened. When you were born again, the door was opened. It's like, hey, you can, you can go. You can be free. You can soar on eagle's wings. You can do what God's called you to do. You can step in and do what God's called. And the Lord is asking, what is it that you want? Oh, hallelujah. The enemy's master discourager. The enemy's master is bring, bringing up disappointments. So that sound, that cry would never come out. But that day, Bartimaeus had decided, I'm coming out. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. They said, be quiet, beggar. But he lifted up his voice even the more and says, Jesus! I believe Bartimaeus decided already what he wanted before Jesus even asked him. What is it that you want today? What is it that you want? You got to make a choice. When we came... First, of course, we went to the U.S. Almost, uh, almost 25 years ago. When we went to the U.S. To, 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 to study in Bible school, we made a choice. We want what heaven has for us. When we came back to Finland, there was actually more things that were left behind than when we originally went to the U.S. 
because we were only married after, uh, under one year, so we didn't have many earthly possessions. I think we had a bed, nice curtains that my wife had made. They were very nice, very nice curtains. She made them herself. She made them, personally made the curtains. They were very nice. We got to pick uh, our kitchen color. Very nice color. I, I did also have a disco ball. But then that, that's another story. <laughs> so there, uh, looking back, we didn't leave too many things behind. So we left the disco ball behind permanently. But then when we came back to Finland 10 years later, there were other things that we needed to leave behind. They were friends, connections, vehicles, houses, jobs, awesome things, many things that were not only good things for, for us, but also for our, for our children and then for the future. But the question is, what is it that you want? We, we answered that question already back in the day. We, we, we kind of answered the question already before we, get, we got married, that we had determined that we want to see the will of God. See, nobody can make that decision for you. God's not a slave owner who forces you, but you got to decide in your heart, what is it that you want? And then when it comes to the things, you're not just a... You know, like a, like a peasant in a communistic system. You just come with the bag. Can I have some grain for the day? Waiting in the line. Can I have some grain for the day so me and my family can survive? What is it that you want? Let me challenge you. As we're getting into this week, what is it that you genuinely want? Bartimaeus decided, as he heard Jesus coming, he said, I'm, 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 I'm going to see the hand of the Lord. I'm going to see G, the healer the Savior, the Deliverer, the one who has the answers is coming by. And I'm, 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 I'm going to get his attention. I'm going to receive from his hand what he has for me. What is it that you want? Not everybody has to have a desire like, well, I want to become the top evangelist. I want to build a big church. But there, everyone should have a heavenly dream. In Acts chapter 2, there was a prophecy declared by Joel that Peter declared that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. The old men will see dreams. Young men will see visions. There's visions and dreams that the Lord has for us. What is it that you want? It's time to lay aside that identity that holds you back and run to Jesus and get what you need. Hallelujah. What's holding you back? I said, what's holding you back? What is it that you want? Summer is a beautiful time in Finland. And we can enjoy the nature, the weather, everything that's, that's around us. But in the midst of this beautiful time of the year, what is it that you personally really, 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 really want? What do you want to see in your life? What do you want to see in your family? What do you want to see in your business? If God's called you to the full-time ministry, what, what do you want to see in your ministry? What's that thing that's burning on the inside of you. Psalm 2 and 8. Nations 
the heathen. That's really the answer to the question when the Lord asked me about 13, 14 years ago before we stepped into ministry when he said, what is it that you want with your life? What is it that you want with your life? What do you want with your life? Nobody else can answer that but you. Are you satisfied? We're just in a normal average life. It's not arrogant to desire God's best. But it is your choice what you want. When I look at people in this room, I see great potential, amazing things, heavenly things, powerful things. Two years from now, three years from now, five years from now, ten years from now. Will you be in the midst of everything heaven has for you? Or will you let the worries and concerns of this world, the pride of life, life lust, the world's pressure to push you to the wrong direction? What is it that you want? Before we pray, I'm going to read to you from Joshua 24. Joshua 24 and verse 14 and 15. They're now going into the promised land. They stepped into the promised land. And Joshua is making this degree. Now therefore reverently fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in truth. Put away the gods which your fathers served on the other side of the Euphrates River and in Egypt to serve the Lord. And if it seems evil to you to serve the Lord, choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve, whether the gods which your fathers that served on the other side of the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. So God makes a decree before a whole nation and says, I brought you out. I've delivered you with my strong hand, but you can make a choice who you want to serve. And of course, the people cry out and answer and say, we will not forsake the Lord. We will not serve other gods. We will serve the Lord. What is it that you want? There's big things. There's big things. Yes, the enemy may have gotten something, distractions, pressures, things. Maybe an attack came against your family. Attack came against your relationships. Maybe you're sitting here today. You've been through a divorce and you wonder, can God restore my life? Maybe you're sitting here. You've been through a bankruptcy. You're wondering, could it be that the Lord still cares about me? I want you to know He does care about you. And His calling for your life has not changed. You may have gone through some things. But I'm telling you, as you turn to Him, you cry out to Him. And you say, Lord, I'm humbling my heart. I want to receive. I'm hungry and thirsty. Lord will bring you out. But what is it that you want? You want what heaven has? The, many peop the problem with many people is that they don't want what heaven has. But I believe there's a group of people in this room that from your heart of hearts, you genuinely want what heaven has for you. If you're young, you don't have to waste years. You can stay right in the middle of the path that God has for you. And if you're elderly... God will cause these final years to be very productive. But you should be able to declare with boldness, this is what I want. Amen. On the basis of the word of God, I want what God has. I want, I'm here, I'm receiving healing. 
I've, I'm here to receive from the hand of the Lord deliverance, restoration, binding to a broken heart, heavenly dreams and vision. I want to see these come to pass. Maybe you've been through financial difficulty, but today you decide, I want to see a breakthrough. What is it that you want? Well, pastor, I want a career. Career is not necessarily a bad thing if it's a kingdom business career. If your life is circled around your own belly button, you will waste your life never producing anything. And you'll find your life in the end of your life as having no impact whatsoever in eternity. If you're in business, that could be a great calling. But make sure your business is a kingdom business. If you're in government, in public service, in the public sector, make sure your calling is linked to the kingdom of God. That plan assignment is linked to the kingdom of God. That you will not be shaken, but you'll be a force to cause a shaking in that realm. Amen. That you will not, nobody's going to be able to buy you. Nobody's going to be able to manipulate you. That you will stand for what's right and declare that which is truth. If you're in the ministry, that you'll be unshakable. That you'll do only what God's called you to do. Some of you may be at home at this moment to do maybe taking care of the children. Whatever it is, your place right now is that you can declare with absolute boldness and confidence, this is what I want. This is what I want. I want to see a breakthrough in this. And you are determined, just like Joshua was. He didn't even care what the people said. We've decided, me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. We're going to see the hand of God. We believe the word of God. We believe what the Bible says, says, says is true. We believe in the power of the Holy Spirit. We're not ashamed of Jesus in these final days. And we're going to see a shaking in the land. Your personality has nothing to do with it. Things you went through has nothing to do with it. You have a will. And you can act all pretty in church. But in the end of the day, that will is going to make some noise. You're going to make some choices. What is it that you want? You want to keep going the way you've been going? Or you want to see a change? If you want shaking, you're going to see shaking. But when the shaking begins, make sure you count at the cost. Because when the Lord begins to shake, everything is going to be shaken. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Some of you look, you think you're doing very well. Shaking begins. You're like, oh, wow. Some things are happening. What is it that you want? There's answers. That day Bartimaeus continued his life. Seeing, God does not change. He's the same God today. Say praise the Lord. I'm going to ask the worship team to join me. I don't need to preach all my messages in one day. We got 15 more services. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. But shaking. What is it that you want? Are you... Is you is, and is the questions... Or the answers to those questions, are they written by someone else? Or is it coming from your heart? What is it that you really want? Life is too short. You can't live somebody else's life. Besides, everybody else's life is already taken. You got your life. What is it that you want? What is it that you want? What do you want? Oh, hallelujah. Somebody says, I want to be a missionary. Well, let's go. Let's go. I want to build churches. Let's go. I want to be an evangelist. Let's go. There's no, there's the, 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 the cities of Finland are not busy right now this morning. 
we can't send any more evangelists because every city square is already booked. There's preachers everywhere. We just can't send any more. If you traveled around, you know that's not true yet. Time will come. There's so many evangelists going around. You have to make sure that you're too busy. We can't all be at the same town square at the same time. Amen. Smile a little. It's okay. But what is it that you want? If you're going to be in business, be in business. Well, I just want to provide for me and my family. Go work at McDonald's then. If you're going to be in business, let's be in business. If you're going to do something, let's do something. If you're going to be in the ministry, let's be in the ministry. Let's do it with all of our heart. God's given us access. We can just go to Him, ask whatever we want. What's His is ours. We're in the same household. What do you want? Oh, Pastor, I want the service to end. Don't worry. In just a moment, it'll end. And you can go to your summer house, twiddling your fingers the rest of the week and saying, this is what I want. And that's your choice. But I'm telling you, there'll come a day. There'll come a day when you wish that you could get back one more day of a life that was missed because of the bad decisions, because of priorities, because of hunger missing from a life, because of indifference and complacency. What do you want? We are here to help, but we can't want for you. We have a Bible school. We'll train you up. We'll put so much word in you, you feel like you're going to explode. We'll lay hands on you. We'll send you out. And if you're not leaving, we can also give you the right foot of fellowship. Kick you out with encouragement. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a picture of encouragement. Okay. But I can't answer the question, what is it that you want for you? You have to answer that. What is it that you want? Maybe this morning you need freedom. Maybe you need an answer. I want to make this invitation to everyone on this beautiful Sunday morning before we go. If you've never given your life to Jesus, if you're in this room, you're on the sound of my voice, you've never ever given your life to Jesus, I want you to know God loves you so much. He loves you so much. He sent his best, his son, to die for you on that Roman cross 2,000 years ago. The Bible says if you believe that God raised him from the dead and you invite him and make him the Lord of your life, you will be saved today. That salvation is available not because of our works, but because of what Jesus has done. The blood is already shed. The price is already paid. Jesus gave his life and God raised him from the grave so that you could have life only thing you can do is to turn your back to the world today and say, Jesus, I've come to you with all of my heart. I believe that you died for me. Would you become and be the Lord of my life? And he will give you his life. As you give him your life, he will give you his life. If you've never done that, I want to pray for you. I want to pray with you. I want to lead you in a prayer this morning. Even if you're watching from home, we'll include you as well. And then afterwards, you can contact us and let us know that you prayed with us. If you're in this room and you have given your life to Jesus, but your life is full of com complacency, compromise, and you're not living that life that you know God has for you, maybe this last winter you made bad choices, and today you're not in a place that you know that you should be, I want to include you in this prayer as well. It's time to come afresh, begin this new week of summer camp meeting by telling the Lord, Lord, I've come with all of my heart. I'm surrendering my life to you afresh. Maybe you went through some life challenges and with those challenges came disappointments, discouragements. And there was an attack that came straight from hell against your life. And because of that pressure, you yielded to the things of the enemy. You've allowed the things of the world to come into your life.
But today you want to say, Lord, I'm coming. I'm coming with all that I have. Today I'm coming. I'm surrendering with everything that I have from my heart. I'm coming to you, Lord, and I want to serve you with all of my heart. The power of the enemy will be broken from your life this morning in Jesus' name. If that's you, I want to invite you into this call as well. And finally, and in just a moment, I'm going to ask you to raise your hand if you fit into one of these groups. And finally, if you're not sure of your salvation, there's uncertainty in your life. We believe that Jesus died on that cross. So you would certainly know that you have passed from death under life. And you can live for Him with all of your heart. You don't have to leave not knowing today. You can leave knowing that Jesus truly is the Lord of your life. And He holds the reins. He's the one who's the Lord of your life. So if you fit into one of these three groups, right here in the presence of the Lord, if everybody can bow their heads and just close your eyes for just a moment. If that's you, if you fit into one of these three groups and you want to say, Pastor, would you pray for me? Would you agree with me? Just quickly raise your hand to heaven and say, that's me. Quickly put your hand up. Bless you. Bless you. Quickly put your hand up. Quickly put your hand up. Bless you. I see that hand. Who else? Bless you, bless you. Bless you, my little sister. Who else? Who else? I want to be able to pray for you. I want to be able to pray with you. So if you raised your hand on any one of those invitations, would you just stand up on your feet? Just stand. Just stand. Just stand, my friends. Just stand. Just stand. And just come, come, we're gonna pray. Just come, just come, just come so we can pray together. I want everybody who let raise their hand just to come. Just come. When you rejoice as people are coming, that's a good sign. That's a good sign. If that's you still on your seats, just come, come. The Lord is speaking to you. There has to be resolve, desire in your heart. Come on. Today the power of darkness will be broken. As we pray for the ones that are up here, we will pray for you if you're watching from home, wherever you may be. So if this was for you, I want you to just put everything else aside for just a moment. And as we pray here, you join us in this prayer. Hallelujah. If you're at the altar, just raise your right hand to heaven. And we're going to pray. And I want you to pray with all of your heart. Knowing these two things. First of all, God loves you so much. He sent His Son because He loves you. God really loves you. And secondly, he never lies. He said in his word, if you call on my name, you will be saved. So on the basis of his word, we can pray today knowing that he loves us and that he will answer as we pray. Join me in this prayer together. Let's say, say it out loud with your lips as well. And say, Heavenly Father, I come to you in Jesus' name. And today I surrender my life, all of my life, into your hand. Into your hand. Thank, you, Jesus, Thank you, Jesus, for dying for me. For dying for me. I, confess I confess that Jesus is my Lord, Jesus is my Lord and my Savior. My Savior. And, I believe and I believe that God raised him from the dead. Lord, please forgive me of my sin. I turn my back to the world and I turn my back on sin. And from this day forward, this day forward I will follow you. Lord Jesus, wash me and cleanse me and let me never be the same. I believe that Jesus Christ, He is the Son of God. He paid the price for my sins. He came to flesh and He's my Lord. And by faith, to the finished work of the cross, I receive the gift of salvation. The world is behind me. Old life is behind me. New life is before me. 
I am saved. I am saved. God is my Father. God is my Jesus, Father. Is my Lord. Jesus is my Lord. And I live for Him the rest of my days. In Jesus' name. Jesus. I want you to just lift your hands to heaven. Father, I thank you for these precious people at the altar. Thank you, Lord, that you heard their prayer today. And I can declare to them as your servant that their sins are forgiven today. Lord, as you see them, you see them as spotless, cleansed, without spot or blemish. And Lord, I thank you that every plan of the enemy is broken, darkness, is broken the power of sin is broken every addiction is broken every curse is broken and Lord they are blessed in the name of Jesus Lord grant them such hunger for your word such thirst for your presence and your spirit and a passion to preach the gospel Lord thank you for each one at the altar that you seal them by your blood and by your presence and by your word that not one will be missing on that day when we stand before you face to face. And Lord, I thank you that you raised these to be mighty men and women of God. That we will even hear stories about them, what they have done for you. In Jesus' mighty name, you are blessed in Jesus' name. You are blessed. You are blessed. You are blessed. I want you to look this way. You are blessed blessed old is gone past is gone past is gone past is gone it's new day amen it's a new day and now you can decide what is it that you want you don't want to go back to anything you came out from right there's heavenly plans there's heavenly plans for you young man there's some big plans God has for you but you got to make a choice. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We want to still take a moment just to bless you, pray for you, and just lay hands on you. I want you to turn to my left, your right. You see uh, some people from our pastoral team. Pastor Mika, Pastor Jimmy is over there. Just let us pray for you just for a moment. What do you want? What do you want? Hallelujah. Bartimaeus didn't read a book about the subject. He just decided this is my day. What is it that you want? What do you want? What do you want this week? What do you want the Lord to do for you? Well, I don't know. Whatever the Lord wants. He's already given us what He wants. He wants to give us everything. Life, life more abundantly. That is superior in quality and overflowing in quantity. That's His will. But what is it that you want? Jesus was walking by. And all the people in that market square could have gotten whatever. The Word of God promises, but they were too busy. What is it that you want? Hallelujah. Everyone has an, a unique assignment. I can't do quite as well what you can do, and you can't do as well what I can do, because we're all doing what God's called us to do. But what is it that you want? Because when you decide, I want to see the will of God for my life then nothing is going to stop you there's no devil in hell that has the power to stop you when you decide I'm going to do what God called me to do hallelujah and somebody's going to be loose this week for their heavenly assignment no more going this way a little bit and this way a little bit I'm talking about straight path oh hallelujah if Bartimaeus could receive his sight if he could be set free if he could leave the old life behind and he left free that day oh hallelujah what can God do for you he's not a respecter of persons Jesus Christ the same yesterday today and forever he's the same God to you that he was to Joshua he's the same God to you that he was to Bartimaeus but you gotta wake up 
Stop talking to people who are not doing anything. Checking with them what should be done. Don't receive constructive criticism from someone who never constructed anything. Stop worrying about the mind and the attitudes of people who've never done anything. Let's do what God's called us to do. Say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Oh, hallelujah. What a beautiful day to be alive. It's nice and warm. Praise the Lord. It's nice after a long winter. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Talamon, talamon, talabasa, Thank you, Jesus. What do you want? What do you want? La Barabas Santana Man for the Montana Man for the Antana Man. What do you want for your family? What do you want for this year? What do you want for your future? What do you want, Lord, to do for you today? Thank you, Lord. 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 La terre bossa for the mantara 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 If you prayed with us just now on the on uh, at home, please call the number on the screen. We would love to hear from you what the Lord is doing in your life. And we want to help you find a Bible believing church so you can plug in wherever you're at and be part of a fellowship. Everybody needs a church, amen. 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 Hallelujah. You just stand up on your feet. The the power of the of the of the Lord is in the place today. And I don't know exactly what it is that you need or what it is that you want what the situation for your life is, but I know that the presence of the Lord is the answer. So I want us to just do this for a moment. The kids can join us as well. Somebody help us communicate with the kids. Um, as we're standing, just um, lift up your hands to heaven and just grab the person, person's hand next to you. And just begin to pray for your neighbor. Just begin to pray for your neighbor right now. La torre boso You may not know exactly what your neighbor needs. But just begin to pray for them in a mighty way. The blessing of God. Healing from the Lord. The power of the Holy Ghost. La torre basse baptism in the Holy Ghost oh si alabarabasataraba visions and dreams purpose for their life healing in the area of their heart pray fervently church I want you to pray fervently pray fervently Lord, bless my brother, bless my sister. 
Lord, bless my brother, bless my sister. Touch them, Lord. Thank you for your healing power. Thank you for your healing power. Oh, Satalabagalamanderias. Thank you for your healing power. Thank you for your healing power. Om Toli Atarabagasando. Leterian Balamantarian Doream. Manterian Tore Mantalamanderias. Thank you for restoration. Thank you. Oh, Satalamanderian. Mantarabasetra. Thank you, Lord, for strengthening. Strengthening. Om Palamantaram. Where there was weakness, strength is coming. Where there was misunderstandings, clarity. Where there was confusion, there's direct and straight and clear direction. Oh, Siatalamantalamantorian. Latore Mantalamantorian. Oh, Satalamantalamantorian. Oh, Palamantalamantorian, Talabaraba, Santalamantoramantas. Oh, Palamantalamantaramantoria, Talabaraba, Santoram. Om Teriya Talabarraba Se Teriya Talaman Talaman Om Talabarraba So Thank you Lord 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 And we join together As with one heart Even for our nation that Lord, as you shake us, Lord, you shake the regions and people around us, that one more time we will see shaking in Finland, that every structure would be shaken, that people's hearts would turn to the living God who made the heavens and the earth. In Jesus' name we pray. Come on, lift your hands and shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let there be fresh excitement about what heaven has for you. Devil is a liar. He's a thief. He's the destroyer. And he's the killer. But Jesus has come to give life and life more abundant. And just like when Jesus was passing by, in Mark 10, the Lord's presence is in the house and God is asking, what is it that you want? What is it that you want? So put aside other things this week. We'll continue tonight at 4 p.m. Put aside other things and come with one agenda that you want to have an encounter with the living God. That those things that have held you back will be broken off, whatever it is that you'll see change in your life, that you'll see a shaking happen through you. Amen? Amen? Say hallelujah. Now already smile in advance right now. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Well, we're going to finish today with some praise. Amen. Just tell your neighbor, give me a little bit of room. And we won't finish the service. We'll just take a little break for lunch. And then we'll come back at 4 p.m. And we are going to plug right back into the presence of the Lord for this second session of the summer camp meeting. So good to see everybody. Let's give glory to Jesus today as we go. And let's sing him like never before. Sing to him. Amen. Come on, lift your highest praise. As we declare, it is so. The shaking has already begun. Hallelujah. Come on. Amen, 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 amen. Oh
mighty name of Jesus. Yes, I'm David. 